Hi, this is Curious Doctor, and let's talk about Losec. So, who lives in Losec? Well, pirates. And like pirates in the real world, they're mostly going to focus on getting enough guns to take you out, or enough numbers into as many boats as they can find to kind of swarm over top you and win by number. Some of these groups hit pay dirt, and they do this well enough that they start making money. And that's usually where things start to get a little weird. And by weird, I mean that Losec corporations are renowned for having corporate cultures that run between, well, downright acidic, the kind of things that you expect to find in other free-to-play games, to the somewhat cultish and sometimes just the cult of personalities where, you know, a group of players will band around one particularly good PvP -er, and they try to learn from him. It's not to say that these groups aren't well organized, well funded, or don't have the ability to field some good ships, but their culture tends to be a little unique, and a lot of these corporations will thrive on that. In fact, they will outright acknowledge that they, you know, have embraced their weirdness. You do you guys. Other groups get extremely well funded, and they attract a lot of people, sometimes bent around the same objectives or style of gameplay or personality or maybe just the way they like to talk and calm. And these folks can pull off some pretty impressive things, taking objectives that you wouldn't otherwise think that they might even try to go after. But when taking any objective, sometimes, well, plans don't exactly unfold the way you think they will. Because, of course, any good plan only survives until its first contact with the enemy. And that enemy is sometimes far more organized than you are, with more people and more ships. And this is where you see the big groups, the big presences in Losec really come in. These are the guys who have the ability to bring a lot of their friends to a fight. So, like any large organization, you have to be aware. If you go poke the bear, do you really want all of his attention when you go poking? That being the case, keep in mind that Losec isn't really where the really big fights happen. And while big fights can happen, you are constrained by a few factors. So who are these groups that are living in Losec? Well, for one, there's Did He Say Jump? Groups like Red vs. Blue and other new PvP corp. Experts in shenanigans like Rooks and Kings, the people who perfected the pipe bomb, snuffed out, who are excellent PvPers, but uh, tend to often operate in very small numbers or micro games, or by themselves. They're not really the kinds of guys that you'll see bringing huge battleship fleets into, uh, into bigger fights or third party in that way. Code, who are notorious for attacking miners and industrialists, but aren't super well known for bringing fights against other PvPers. Shadow Cartel, who are a name and presence unto themselves, and very well known. Good fights, good guys to know. Fed Up and other faction warfare groups, uh, you'll find them in four distinct regions in space, operating on behalf of the Four Empire. Groups like Fed Up are actively recruiting new bros, and their PvP and PvE is a good place to get your feet wet in the game. Groups like Waffles and their Navy Bro Corp Pancakes, another excellent group. They are definitely on the largest and larger sizes of alliances operating in Losec. They have a Keepstar in Kanaka called the Waffle House. Great name, by the way. And they are typically the ones that you will find uh, rolling over to poke the bear, because they've got the numbers to do it. And of course, organizations like the Ivy League or Eve University. Shameless plug time, you know who else operates in LOSAC? Well, Iron Armada. And like several of these other organizations, Iron Armada is actively seeking out PvPers. We are looking to recruit. We're always looking for people who are interested in learning PvP. We do teach. We encourage you to join. Check us out in-game in our chat channel, Iron Armada Recruitment. All one word. 
So where do fights happen at Losek, given that the biggest fights you'll typically find are, you know, involving carriers occasionally, or you get into your larger size vessels like the battleships and battlecruisers. That's typically the high end of the scale. But most fights in Losek tend to rely upon cruiser doctrines, and occasionally T3Ds. Well, a lot of fights tend to happen on gates. Gates are natural choke points and places where fights will occur, because it's an easy place to catch people coming through. In fact, of any place in space where you're likely to find these happen, gate camps will occur on gates. Not just because the name is super obvious, but because of the fact that a lot of people will use LOSEC as transit between different regions of space, they'll find the shortest possible route they can take, and if you happen to be sitting on a gate with some friends, well, you have the advantage of being able to catch whoever comes through. So, in LOSEC, more so than in any other kind of structure, you tend to find fights happening at gates. And of course, in part of fighting on gates, you have to deal with gate guns in LOSEC. Gate guns are those little structures floating 20 to 60 kilometers off the gate itself, and they are often a single pair to as many as eight, depending upon the type of gate you're jumping through, whether it's a region gate or a constellation gate or so on. The size of the gate will typically uh, change the number of guns that you'll encounter, but all these guns have something in common. That is that they have a 150 kilometer range they do 350 DPS, and they deal omni damage between explosive, electromagnetic, kinetic, and thermal, and they have 100% tracking, which means that they never miss. If you are within 150 kilometers range, you will take damage. They have the same stats as station sentry guns. Those are the guns that you find orbiting stations, or seated at a, uh, at a distance around possums. Sentry guns have some very specific uh, advantages in the sense that you can play on dynamics to make use of them, um, but uh, you definitely don't want to be starting a fight on a gate if you're in anything small enough that it can't soak the damage from those guns, because your enemies won't need to worry about shooting back, the guns will do it for them. So let's take an example scenario. Say you're in your Heron and you've jumped through gate, your cloak timer runs out, and you decide to do some exploration. So you pop some probes. And on your ship, you've got some, you know, hybrid guns or a couple of rocket turrets just to operate as sort of point defense for yourself while you're exploring. And in warps Korax. So Mr. Korax Pirate here has warped in. He says, hey, look, a heron. Good, soft, squishy kill. Obviously an explorer. He's too busy looking at his probes. I'm going to take him out. I'm going to fire a few volleys of missiles up. Well, the moment he does that, two things happen. The first is, he gets flagged by the Crime Watch system. The Crime Watch system is the system within EVE which monitors and creates flagged conditions for people based on the activities, criminal and suspect, that they have engaged in while operating in secure to space. The moment you start engaging with somebody, you will take a series of conditions that get applied to you. And these conditions do things like signal to gate guns that they start shooting at you. In the case of being the aggressor and attacking somebody who has not fired upon you first, that is an illegal attack. You get flagged as suspect, and the guns will start shooting you. Now, let's say that you and your Heron decide to shoot back. Well, when you do, you get a limited engagement timer in addition to the aggression timers and other timers that come in. And that pirate has now achieved his objective, which is to say that he's gotten you to fight back. So he stops shooting you, and he turns and he aligns out, and he warps off. Maybe just to a, a ping, 300 kilometers off. As long as he gets outside the 150 kilometer range of the gun, the guns will stop shooting. So all he has to do now that he has a five minute limited engagement timer with you is warp back in and shoot you 
And now, because you have a limited engagement timer, the guns will no longer fire on him, because what he's done now is a legal engagement. But there's always the third party. Let's say Mr. Tallow swerps in and says, hey, look, a couple of squishy targets. I'm going to blow these guys up. Well, first thing he does is when he targets you and activates his modules, is that he's going to get flagged, and of course he's going to start getting shot by the gate gun. But because he has enough tank and rep speed to face tank the guns and any damage you could do to him, he's just going to blow you both up. That's one scenario. Something you need to be aware of when you're looking at gates is that there's a lot of ways that people will play with timers to get you to engage so that they can take advantage of those states in order to hurt you. And one of those is the slow boat. So let's say you warped within distance of a gate, or maybe you're sitting there camping, and you see an industrial warp in, and it stops at about 8 to 10 kilometers off the gate, and then begins slow boating in towards the gate meaning that it's moving very slowly. Well, this is a behavior that you typically see in ships that are operating on autopilot. Well, that's a little fishy, especially if that person is negatively um, aligned to you in the sense that its standings are low to your corporation, to yourself, or to your alliance. Well, <laughs> that's bait. So that slow boating ship that's moving in, well, he might have a bounty on him or a kill right. This is a particular type of scam where that value of that bounty that you're seeking to attack him, that's the honeypot. That's the thing drawing you in. He may also be working on a kill right scam where he set the value of the ship um, and then gone a little bit above that as the price to redeem the kill right. So often what will happen is that somebody will use an alt to blow up a ship and get a kill right, and then they'll put that alt in the industrial and fill the hold with loot or, you know, set a high bounty. And all of this is just meant as extra incentives for you to attack them. And of course, it looks too good to be true. Here you're going to get a sweet payout, you're going to get the kill mail from destroying the ship, and potentially dropping any loot that, you know, hits because of the RNG. And you're going to get the, the advantage of that on your kill board. It's going to look nice. Hey, you got this sweet kill. Well, wrong. Because the moment you engage him, the moment you attack as the aggressor, you're going to take gate guns, you're going to flag suspect, and it means that any friends he has sitting waiting for you, maybe on the other side of the gate, or a short distance away, or maybe just a sino burst. Whatever the case is, it's bait. And just like that, you're dead. And there's a lot of ways to abuse engagement flag. There's a few I'll go over here. The first is weapons timer abuses, or aggression abuses. Using people's aggression timers to split fleets by getting them to engage you and then jumping through the gate. Only those without weapons timers will be able to follow you through. So you get part of the fleet to aggress you, crash the gate, jump through, and then you have a 60 second period, potentially, in which to kill a couple of those ships and get away, or to take, his, take them down, maybe with the help of friends, and chew them down one small group at a time. The second is to provoke somebody into attacking you at range from the gate. So if you're at 150 kilometers away or within that distance and somebody has burned to get to you, well, you just have to burn away a little bit and we either wait for them to engage you so that they take damage from the gate guns but you do not, or you engage them outside of the range of the gate guns and then you're free to fire because you're not taking any extra damage from those gate guns. And there's always crash in the gate. So if you jump through and you find yourself in the middle of a gate camp, you can always just burn directly back to the gate and jump through. Don't engage anybody, because if you do, 
or if you have your um, targeting system to auto target back anybody who locks you, you could find yourself um, accidentally activating a offensive module in your panic and then getting an aggression timer that prevents you from jumping through. So this only works if you don't shoot back. And then there's always shutting the door, which basically, or slamming the door, as it's sometimes known, is basically just getting forces into place around a system at its exits, get somebody to engage you and follow you to a gate so that you're, they're already flashing, and then your force can engage that legal target, preventing them from escaping the system. Suspect timer abuses are weapons timer timeout trick, and this is one I've seen done a few times quite successfully. What you do is you undock with a suspect timer just before it runs out. Chances are somebody who doesn't lock you quickly will lock you and fire just as the timer runs out, and they'll begin taking sentry guns, and then you can fire on them as a legal target without any repercussions yourself. This works only if you have a fast internet connection and a fast client, and you take advantage of the 10 second limited invulnerability while undocking from a station. You really have to time it in such a way that you've got a period of about six or seven seconds where you're not protected, during which they're attempting to lock you or maybe trying to get a shot off before your timer runs out. And it could come down to the time of a couple of server ticks for that damage to apply and what you're hoping to do is have your own timer run out before their weapons fire reaches you. Tricky but it can work. And then there's can flipping and this is something that happens in high sec but people will often you know get you to chase back into low sec. Can flipping works on the idea that you go to a mining fleet or you go to a missioner and you find a wreck that has been marked uh, available to all, or you find a jettison canister that belongs to somebody else, and you open it. And the moment you open it, you become suspect. And you get them to attack you. In that case, making them suspect as well and a legal target, at which point your friends can warp in or sign a win and start attacking without fear of Concord or somebody else getting involved. Other engagement sites beyond gates and things like asteroid belts are the following. Anomalies. Uh, these are accessible combat and mining sites visible in space that you can find in the probe scanner window. DED sites, which are special combat anomaly escalations which have to be scanned down as a cosmic signature and can be warped to or that are saved in your journal when you get an escalation, it can be warped to by the escalation owner. Or faction warfare complexes. And faction warfare complexes behave like anomalies, but with some small differences. One of the things that DED sites and faction warfare complexes share in common is that they will almost always be behind an acceleration gate. You'll have to warp in, activate the gate, and proceed through into the site. Um, one of the things that happens with DED sites though is that if you're not the owner of that site, you have to have a key, a key to unlock the gate so that you can uh, proceed through. Once you arrive on the acceleration gate, um, you'll typically find that the sites themselves accept particular sizes or classes of ship. Some are limited to frigate, others to destroyer, and yet more to cruiser and above. Faction warfare plexes specifically limit novice sites, so if it has the name novice in it, like Galente Novice Outpost, it will allow a T1 and Faction Frigate in through its acceleration gate, but nothing larger. Small outposts will allow frigates and destroyers, but no T3Ds. Mediums will allow frigates, destroyers, and cruisers, but no T3 cruisers. 
and the large sites are unrestricted. Large sites are also the only ones that do not require you to go through an acceleration gate to get there. Let's do a quick, quick and dirty cover of Faction Warfare. So Faction Warfare is one of EVE Online's games within the game. In Faction Warfare, Caps leaders are working for opposing, opposing empires uh, and basically attempt to capture and hold regions of space. It is, in essence, a giant game of capture the flag. But it has some advantages. Running Faction Warfare gains you access to special missions accessible only to Faction Warfare capsuleers. And Faction Warfare has immediate effects on your faction's standings and will impact your degree of freedom in opposing factions' regions of space. But the advantage being that as your faction standings climb with the faction you're working for, you get better and better rewards. And, in saying that, Faction Warfare is the best source of loyalty points in the game. Faction Warfare runners can make a mountain of loyalty points and turn that in for things like Faction Halls, Faction BPCs, and Faction Guns and Modules and Ammunition. When you enter Faction Warfare space, you'll notice three different types of distinct anomalies, or beacons, that you'll find in space. There's the Infrastructure Hub, which is the core of the Faction Warfare system, and the thing which determines who is presently in control of that pocket of space. There is the Military Beacons, or the Plexes, or Complexes, as they're otherwise known. Things like your Minmatar Medium Outpost, or your Minmatar Small Outpost, and if you look at the type for these, it'll always be Military Beacon. And then there's the mission sites, and these are always named things like Dead Men Tell No Tales or The Cost of Hubris. These are sites that can be pulled as a Faction Warfare Runner once you've got a high enough standing. When you warp in on these sites, you'll find that they often have an outpost uh, sitting at the center. This is the capture point in Plexus. This is the thing that you need to be near in order to hold it. It is the veritable flag. Capture works like this. You go to the acceleration gate, and once you've activated the acceleration gate, you warp in about 100,000 kilometers. And you'll land at a warp in beacon, which is inside the capture radius. This is the big circle you have to stay in in order to capture that outpost. Typically, the warp in beacon is going to be about 10 kilometers away from the capture point or the outpost, but if you don't stay within that 30 kilometers, you don't capture that beacon. And this whole system is based around something we call the Circle of Death. Meaning that the iHub can only be captured when all of the complexes have been captured, and it works on a cycle like this. After downtime, the system is considered stable. It enters a contested state when you start trying to capture all of the complexes owing to the other side. Once you've captured all of the plexes, the iHub, or the infrastructure hub, will enter a vulnerable state. It will then say the iHub is vulnerable. Once the iHub is vulnerable, you destroy the iHub by reducing it down to 1% of structure. It's never actually destroyed in low sec space. But at downtime, its allegiance will flip to your side. So on the next boot of the servers, the iHub in the system that was quote unquote captured will now read as belonging to the faction that it was engaged in. So, Minimitar versus Amar, or Galente versus Kaldari. iHubs have 25 million hit points. That's 7.5 uh, 7 million in shield, 7.5 million in armor, and 10 million in structure. And so ideally you're going to find yourself in a position where you're going to want to bring a sizable fleet that can put out some decent damage in order to take the iHub down. You know, um, 6 to 10 cruisers at least will do it pretty quickly. 
Um, you know, more if you can bring bigger ships. But the big thing here is the amount of damage that you can lay up. Because the IHUB has a shield recharge rate of 1700 hit points per second. Which means that everything you do up to that threshold basically doesn't count. And it can only be attacked when vulnerable. So let's talk a little bit more about gate camping. Gate camping is basically just the act of using a stargate as catch point. You literally just sit on the gate and watch time go by waiting for somebody to come through. Like camping or fishing. Hence the name, gate camping. Some people utilize advanced gate camping techniques such as different kinds of baiting or scams, some of which I've gone over already, to force opponents into an aggression timer. Basically either preventing them from jumping through the gate as an escape or by um, giving them the advantage of being able to engage once they go suspect. How to spot a gate camp. If you're in the system, you and you're within range, um, within at least 14 AU, or 13.4, of the gate that you want to go through, well, you can go to a nearby celestial or beacon, and you can de-scan in the direction of that gate. That will tell you if there's anybody sitting there waiting to attack you. You can watch for suspects on a gate. So if you warped within 100 of the gate and you find ships there and they're blinky, well, guess what? <laughs> Those people are very likely gate camping. And if you find tackle ships jumping through a gate repeatedly or just in advance of your approach to a gate, that's a pretty good sign that they have friends sitting on the other side of the gate waiting for you. And if you happen to be in null sec, jumping into low sec, if you find the presence of deployed bubbles on the null sec side, either somebody was gate camping there, or is, and may just be cloaked up. How to gate camp yourself? Well, you get tackle on a gate and you get some DPS. If you're in null sec, you deploy some bubbles, and you kill what comes through. Now there is another sort of site that you'll find in LOSEC where people will typically engage in PvP. And this one is a little less popular, um, just because it, it's not always a guarantee of content. But if you happen to know systems and you get to know your neighborhood well, moons. Moons and planets are excellent sources of PvP. If you travel around moons in a system and you warp at range, you'll typically find that moons have a pause on the Marvel player on Starbase. These are used in mining the moons and creating moon goo, or a uh, moon resource, that can be sold as commodity on the market and is typically worth quite a bit and can be re and is reused uh, in refining for uh, industry. Now, it's not just the, you know, prevalence and presence of posses that present opportunities for content, you know, ringing the dinner bell, as it were, by attacking the stick and getting their, you know, response fleets, uh, panties in a twist, but the ability to look at moons and planets that have pokos on them, and the ability to approach those planets and wait lie in wait looking for industrialists who are coming by to pick up their PI. If they're, if they're visiting these planets on the end of a pickup cycle, they could have quite a bit of value in their holds, and you can get that added to the value of your payouts when you destroy them. So always look at travel to and from planets. Spend a little bit of time in your own backyard getting to know who's traveling to the moons and planets, and identify which bosses are being used for what. This will give you a lot of opportunities in PvP that you wouldn't have had if you weren't paying attention. And that concludes this video on low sex base. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. If there's anything that I've left out or that you feel I've missed, please let me know. And otherwise, thank you for watching. Please, of course, like, share, and subscribe, and recommend me to your friends. Cheers.